checkmate. One of the easiest checkmates that even some club level players don't know how to do. Make sure to watch to the end of the video today because after I show you the trick that we're going to use to learn this checkmate, we're going to use this against a 3200 rated computer and I guarantee you we're going to win every single time. This is such an easy checkmate once you learn this very simple trick. Stick around, lots of fun ahead. All right, now before we begin today's lesson, I wanna say a big thank you to each and every one of you that liked and shared our videos and subscribed to the channel. We just hit 100 subscribers. Now I know that number might not seem like a big deal to a lot of people, but we all start somewhere and I'm super grateful that you took the time to be with us here today and I hope you enjoy this video. All right, on to the lesson. In this game, we're going to start off by learning how the game is going to end up, which I like to call the ideal position. And then from there, we sort of reverse engineer or go backward and figure out how did we get here in the first place. This makes the whole process a lot easier. And this is such an easy checkmate. So stay tuned. Here we go. All right. First thing is first. When you're checkmating with two bishops, remember you'll checkmate your opponent's king on one of the corner squares. A1, H1, A8, H8. Doesn't matter which one, because if we checkmate on this corner, we'll be able to replicate this process on the other corner, or the bottom corner, or the other corner. It doesn't matter which way you'll checkmate, because it's an 8x8 grid, so the system works this way or that way. It's really just a matter of perspective, so we just have to sort of shift our mental GPS to help us accommodate. We'll go through that in just a moment. It's super, super easy. So here, another thing to remember is, whichever side your king is on, that's the side your opponent's king will be checkmated. For example, if my king is here on the a6 square, I'll checkmate my opponent's king on the a8 square. If my king is here on the c1 square, I'll checkmate my opponent's king here on the a1 square. There's other ways to look at it too. I could be here and we could be face to face this way or face to face the other way. It's really like that perspective thing. So we'll get to that in a second. Let's try to checkmate in this position. So now I have my bishops are connected and they are zapping through like this. Let's use that red color to take away all these different squares. Good. So my opponent can't go to any of these squares. It's our turn. We want to shift our opponent though from being able to go to that F8 square here and the G8 square here and force our opponent to go to the H8 square because that's ultimately the square that we're going to checkmate on, one of the corner squares. In this position, can you find a way to take away this f8 square and nudge the king over to h8? Have you found the move? The move is bishop goes to e7, taking away the f8 square. And let's use the color red for the squares that the black king can no longer go to. It seems kind of fitting. Here, black can take his king and walk to h8, but no other square is permissible. Here, we've taken away the f7 square, the g7 square, and the h7 square. So black says, but you left me the h8 square. Good. Now, let's say we make a huge mistake here, a big blunder, by removing the g8 square and moving our bishop to, say, f7. And now we've taken away the g8 square. The black king has nowhere left to go. This is a huge mistake as the game is now stalemate. It's a draw. We don't want that. We're winning. So what should we do? Well, the best thing to do here is waste one move. Make a totally useless move. That's the best way to describe losing a tempo. So we want to, on purpose, give away one move. And the way to do that is make a useless move. So let's take a look at what wouldn't be a useless move. If I took my king, for example, and brought it down to h5, this is not a useless move. It's very useful for black. Now black has two options. So this is a bad move for us. We don't want to do that. Instead, what I want to do is keep the black king walking on h8 or g8, but I don't want to take away the g8 square now. If I move to f7 and I take this square away right away, it's a draw. So instead, I want to make a waiting move or useless move. So here, what useless move can you see? 
So, did you find a waiting move that'll make your opponent's position slightly worse on the next move? The best idea is take the bishop on g6 and go to either f5, e4, d3, c2, or b1. This way, on the very next turn, when your opponent has to move the king to g8, you can move your bishop to a square like, say, a2, and zap the king and force the king back over to the h8 square. After that, you'll take your bishop on f7, go to c6, and zap him again. And this way, with your king taking away the remainder of the squares, it'll be checkmate. So, take your bishop and go to any square on this diagonal. So let's say we take the bishop and go to e4, for example. It's just as good as any other one of those squares. The king goes over to g8. Now we say check and attack the king. Now the king must go over to the h8 square. And one last move, bishop f6. Very good. After the bishop goes to f6, we're checking the king on h8. We're taking away g8. And we're attacking the g7 and the h7 square with our king. So here, this is the way we checkmate. But how did we get to this ideal position in the first place? So let's take a quick look at four easy steps that will make you a master of this checkmate in just a few more minutes. Stay with me. Step one, get your bishops to attack all four of the middle squares. E4, E5, D4, D5. In this position, I'm going to start with my light squared bishop and move him to the f3 square, attacking two of the middle squares, the e4 square and the d5 square. Great. Now let's say it's black to play and black makes whatever move. In fact, we don't really care what black does because we have a system. So let's say black takes the king and goes to the d6 square in this case. Now we're going to take our dark squared bishop and go to c3. That's right, because from c3, the bishop will be attacking the remaining squares in the middle, the d4 and e5 square. So let's get them there now. Excellent. Step one is complete. Great job. Now on to step two. On to step two. Line up your bishops side by side on any of the four middle squares. In this case, we've highlighted the d4 and e4 squares, but you can just as easily select, say, e4 and e5 if you prefer. Or maybe you like e5 and d5, or d4 and d5. It doesn't change anything except for which corner you end up checkmating your opponent's king on. That's all. So it's just back to that whole orientation and board GPS thing we were talking about. So in this case, let's get going. We move our bishop to d4. We've moved one of our bishops on one of the four middle squares. Now we just need the other bishop to follow. Black makes any old move and we don't mind whatever black does. Here we take our bishop and line it up. Now we're on e4 and d4. Excellent. Step two is complete. Great. Now step three. Walk your king to either bishop corner. So step three is to take our king and place him on a bishop corner. Now keep in mind, your bishops on their own are taking away all of these squares from the black king. He can't escape. See, we have him in this little V. And the king can still dance, but only around these little squares here. He's kind of stuck, and he can dance around here, but he can't escape the V. And later, we're going to just tighten this up a little bit and a little bit more, and eventually the poor king will have only two squares to wobble around in. And then we'll get into our ideal position and checkmate. But before we do that, we've got to take the bishop corner. So here, we're going to move our king after black makes a move. Black plays king to d6, and now we start walking up to try to take the bishop corner. Black goes back, and we go up. Black goes across, and we go up. Now we're making our way to f5, but black plays king e6, blocking us from getting to the f5 square. So, in this case, let's try going to the other side and making it on c5. We run, we run, we run, we run, and black stops us again. So now we run the other way. Let's try making it again, and black stops us again. Which brings us to step number four. The final thing you're supposed to do is... Can you take a guess what step number four is? So, have you guessed what the fourth step would be? If you guessed, make a waiting move. That is, make a totally useless move so that it's your opponent's turn again. You are correct. In this case, we can make two waiting moves. Either take the king over to the g4 square or the g5 square. Doesn't really matter which. Let's take the king over to g5. Now it's black to play, and again, we don't care what black does. Black makes a move. 
Now white to play and we now can take over the f5 square again. And as soon as we do that, our king is also attacking the e6 square and our bishops with that v pattern are forcing the king up. Now whatever black plays, it's our turn and the job here is take the bishops up one rank at a time in such a way that your opponent can't go down. So whenever you get this pattern, I always like to tell my students that if you have a king to the right, move your bishops to the left. If the king's on the left, move the bishops to the right. So we pivot the bishops depending on what side our, our king is. If our king's on the right, pivot the bishops to the left. If our king's on the left, pivot them to the right. And we do it step by step with the bishop that can't be attacked. So in this case, which bishop can we move one to the left that can't get attacked? In this case, that bishop would be c5. We move the bishop to c5 and the king cannot go downstairs to attack us because of our bishop here. Now, if we didn't do that and say we move this bishop up instead, our opponent can come down and start attacking us. So we don't want that. So let's go back and after black makes a move, we move our bishop one square up, the one that can't be attacked. Again, we don't care what black does, black makes a move. Bishops are now lined up. Now we're taking up more and more ranks and no matter what black does, we want this king to go over here on a bishop corner. That's our next step. So whatever black does, take the bishop corner. Now black is getting very annoying. He brings the king back to c7 and says, I'm not letting your bishops go up. This time, if your bishop pivots and decides to go this way to say check and force me back, I'll just capture it like this. Okay, so now we can't do that. So revert back to step four in those cases. That is, wait, make a waiting move. So now I just move my king up. Now my opponent to play, they make a move. I again move my bishops up one step at a time in a way that I can't get captured or attacked. So I move my bishop up to b6 in this case. Black to play and whatever black does, connect the bishops up again and beautiful. Now we've got our bishops on the sixth rank. I just need to get my king in that ideal position again. And you recall from our first position, that was on the left side because we're going to checkmate our opponent's king on this side of the board because our opponent's king is on this side of the board, the queen side. So we're going to checkmate him on this corner, a8. So take the king now, move him over to a6, very good. Excellent, now I've made it to a6. Now it's time to shift the king over like we did in that earlier example with the ideal position. So take away a square, now I've taken away the square. The king can no longer go to the c8 square because my bishop says no. So now my opponent makes this move to a8. But if I take my bishop and I go to c7, what happens? It's a stalemate again. So remember what we do here? Make a waiting move. Take the bishop and move it to any square in this diagonal. It doesn't matter which one. Because all we're going to do is go up again and then shoot that laser beam and force our opponent's king back to the a8 square once we say check. So any one of those squares will do. So let's take him to, let's say d4. Now black to play and black takes the king and goes to b8. We check him again. The king must go to a8 and finally we get a checkmate and it all makes sense. It all was step by step and we had a strategy. We knew exactly what to do. Now it's time to take this strategy and try it out against the 3200 rated computer and I guarantee you we'll get a checkmate each and every time. It might be on a1, it could be on a8, h1 or h8, but it'll always happen because we have a technique. Now, stay tuned for the computer. All right, so it just occurred to me that some of you might have a question about this position. So I wanted to take a quick second and go over some of the details in case our opponent's king somehow escapes the V-shaped prison that we're trying to create for him. So let's take a quick look and then off to our game. Here, we're going to take our king and place him on a bishop corner. Good, that's step three. Now we're kicking up our opponent's king, making him go up another rank. Now remember, wherever your opponent's king goes, it doesn't matter. Our king is on the right, so we pivot the bishops to the left. If our king was on the left, we would pivot the bishops to the right. Excellent. So we move up the bishops step by step in a way that they can't get attacked. So here I bring the bishop to c5. Now it's my opponent's turn, and whatever my opponent does, I still play the same move. So my opponent runs away. Great. Now I take my bishop and I give him another check on d5, and my opponent's king now goes to g7. Now my opponent's king has three different squares to select from. That's a lot. 
I want to take away these squares. So the next move I can make here is King G6. Taking away this square on H6, taking away the G7, G6, excuse me, and the F6 square, and the bishop is also taking away the remaining squares. So the black king only has H8 and H7 left. Suppose our opponent's king now goes to H8. Now we want to make sure our king is facing our opponent's king in such a way that we remove the remainder of these squares. Now this can be done in several different ways. So it doesn't have to be exactly this way, but this is one such example. So we're going to take our king and place him on f6. Great. Now our opponent plays king h7. That's the only play that he has left. And so now it's our turn and we know our opponent can go either up or down. And we want to take away one of those squares. So let's take away the h6 square. Now our opponent can only go up or down from h7 and h8. So these are the only two squares left. Because this bishop cuts off the g8 square. My king cuts off the g7 square. Cuts off the g6 square. And my bishop cuts off the h6 square. Excellent. Now my opponent goes up. Now I take my king and place it on f7. Since my king alone now takes away the remainder of these squares, now my opponent's moves are very standard. He has to go back and forth and back and forth, and I have an easy mate. King goes to h7. Now we say check. King goes back upstairs, and there's checkmate. The same thing can be done in any kind of orientation. So the it can be done on the 8th rank, H file, 1st rank, A file. Doesn't matter how you do this as long as you remove your opponent's squares. So for example, here we go to G6, uh, excuse me, G5, and our opponent now, say, plays to, instead of H8, goes to instead H7. Now in this case, it's super easy again. F6 with our king. Our opponent again only has two squares, either H6 or H8. So we play. Uh, he plays h6, so now we play bishop goes to f3, removing the h5 square. Now we're taking away this square, our king takes away the remainder of these squares, we're forcing the king upstairs. Now the king goes up. Take your king, place it on f7, and take away these three squares, and then that's it. It's just standard moves here. Check, force the king up, check again, force the king up, check again, and that's mate. This can be done again in any kind of side of the board on the first rank eighth rank h file a a uh, file it doesn't matter which side of the board you do this on just remember if your opponent also tries to escape you so for example let's go back and say this position and say after a couple of checks our opponent goes to d7 now and now we take up uh, our bishops one at a time and our opponent now say instead of doing that let's say he runs this way our bishops are doing a great job and so i take my king and i go to the bishop corner now my opponent's king goes this way. So I say check. But now the king goes to the right side of the board. So now say check again. Now you're covering, excuse me, you're covering these two squares. Oh, excuse me, these two squares. There we go. I'm having a little technical issue here. Now the king has to go over to f8. There's no other move. And the king wants to escape to g7. So take your king over and make sure the king can't go outside. He can't go here. He can't go there. He can't go anywhere. So the only square that he can go to is g8. Good. So now the king goes to g8. Now here you have to stop him from escaping out because he wants to go to h7. So take your king again, go to g6. Now the king goes to either f8 or h8. Again, it doesn't matter which one. The move order will be identical. Your moves will be the same. So the king goes to f8, check. The king goes to g7, g8, check. The king goes to h8, and again, checkmate. And the same again can be said if he doesn't go that way. Suppose he goes this way. Don't cover this this uh, square on g8. If you do that, it'll be stalemate again. So take your bishop again, cover the f8 square. King now has no choice. Then say check again, king has no choice, and again it's mate. So as long as you remember this, you can sort of tweak and modify it depending on which side of the board your opponent is, on a file, on a rank, it doesn't really matter. You can just sort of modify that. But the same principle stays intact. Now it's time to play against the computer. All right, now let's test this new technique against a 3200 rated computer. Now we're going to do a few examples and each time I'm going to go faster and faster and faster and faster. Let's see if you can keep up with our final example. Here we go. First rule is attack the middle squares. So place your bishops on any square that will help to attack the middle squares. In this case, let's start with F3 like we did in our first lesson. And now we're going to take the bishop and go to C3. Great. I've taken control of all four middle squares. Now my next step is 
take the bishops and line them up side by side on any of the four middle squares. We'll go back into the same way and then maybe for the next example, we'll try another one and maybe another one and we'll do it really, really quickly. But in this one, we'll do it in the same way that we did in the lesson. So here we go. We've now lined up the bishops. Excellent. The bishops are in this V shape taking away all the squares from our opponent's king. So he's never going to come outside. And my next plan is take the king and place it on any of the bishop corners. So I'm going to take it and let's say we go back to the f5 square. Great. I got there. Now I'm going to take my bishops because I'm in this position. And remember, this is one of the things I always tell our students is it kind of looks like a couch, like almost like a little sofa like that. See, kind of looks like a bit of a sofa, like a couch that I'm sitting on. And what we're going to do is once you get into that little couch position, then in this case, take the bishops and move them one step up diagonally, of course, away from your king. So opposite direction. So if your king's on the right side, pivot the bishops to the left. If the king's on the left side, pivot the bishops to the right. So here we go. I'm going to take this bishop and again, move the bishop that can't get attacked. If I move the bishop to d5, he might attack me. So let's move this bishop up because he can't attack me. Now I move the other bishop side by side following the rules. Now the king pivots over and comes to this little sofa. All that it's missing is a character just taking a nap. Okay, now I want to move my bishop up, but I can't because my opponent's king will take me. So I make another waiting move. I go up. Whatever my opponent does, I don't really care. Here we go. I'm just going to copy the same idea and pattern. Now here be careful because the idea is to get the king to this uh, ideal position. But if your king, say I go here and my opponent walks over, if I push the king up, it's another draw because I've taken away this square. My bishops are taking away the remainder squares, all of them, this one over here too, and this one over here. So my opponent's king has nowhere to go and this is another stalemate. So I don't want to go up. Instead, I want to go to the main position is here, this ideal position. And then from here, it's very simple. Make a waiting move try to get your opponent's king to walk over to the a8 square. So I take this square away. If I go here, it's another draw. Make another waiting move wherever is fine. Another little check, another little check. And that's made. Very good. Let's try one more. I'm going to go a little faster this time, so see if you can keep up. Okay, let's try this again, but this time a little bit faster and in a slightly more complicated position. But it's not complicated at all because we know the steps. Step one. Attack the middle squares with your bishop. Step two, line up your bishops in any kind of order you'd like as long as they're side by side in the middle. Step three, place your king on a bishop corner. And step four, make a waiting move whenever you need. Here we go. I'm going to take this bishop and land him on e5 first, see what my opponent does. Great, now I'm going to land my pieces side by side, but now my opponent's attacking me. So I pull the bishop back and now look, look at what we have. The bishop is attacking both of them in this direction. So the king will be checkmated on the 8th rank. So either on a1 or h1. So let's take the king and do the third step, which is place the king on a bishop corner. Super easy. Let's get him there. He's not letting me get there. Step four, make a waiting move. So now I go up. I take the bishop corner. And now I have my little couch set up. And every time I have my couch set up, I'm reminded that my next step is to take my bishops and either take a rank or a file, depending on which way I'm pushing my opponent's king. And remember, if the king is on the right, you push the bishops to the left. If the bishop, if the king is on the left, you push the bishops to the right. So whichever side your king is on, push the bishops the opposite direction of your king. So here I'm going to take the bishop that can't get attacked. I'm going to go to c4 since he can't go to attack me. My bishop defends. Now I bring my bishop down and now I'm connected in this little rank. Now I'm going to bring my king and I took the bishop corner, but now he's not letting me go down because he'll take me. So I'm going to bring my king down to e2, no problem. Now I'm going to bring the bishop down that he can't attack and I get my ideal position. Remember not to bring your king here now. You don't want to take the bishop corner on the last rank or file. If you do that, it'll be a stalemate. So you go back to the ideal position, which is take the king to the corner at which you're going to checkmate your opponent's king. So in this position, for example, I'm going to checkmate him on a1. I want to take my king to a3. So let's walk him there. Let's get over there as fast as we can. Good. Now my opponent's going back and forth and back and forth. That's all he can do. So now I make a waiting move because any other move that I make uh, will let my opponent come outside. For example, if I pull this bishop back this way, then my opponent's king can run outside to d2. So I'm going to pull the bishop back here to say b4. I could also go to a5. 
So now that I've done that, I keep this diagonal. But now I want to get the king to keep walking to a1. So I take the bishop, I go down to d2, I've controlled this square. Again, don't go to c2 here, you're going to cause a draw here. It's going to be a stalemate. So make a waiting move. Take the bishop and go one across, all the way across. Or you go five across or three across, it's your choice, however which way you want to do it. Here we go, check and checkmate. So this is us doing it a little bit faster. Now to do it as fast as possible. Here we go. I'm not going to say much, but we're just going to do it. Are you ready? Here we go. All right. Now I'm going to do this one last time and as fast as I can do it. Do you think you can keep up? Let's find out. Are you ready? Get set. Go. Okay. Get the bishops in the middle squares while he's attacking me. So pull back now. Get the king to a bishop corner. Even this way will work. Now get him on the little couch setup. Make a waiting move so you can bring up your bishops. He's not letting me go there. Make another waiting move. Another waiting move. Boy, he's not letting me do a lot. Okay, now bring the king to the ideal position. So let's walk him there. Get over there. Now we want to take the king and force him this way. So let's pull back the bishop. Attack. He has to go there. Another waiting move. And mate, we did it. Excellent. So once you learn this system, it'll become very robotic for you. It's super easy. Just remember the steps and follow along. Try playing this against a computer a few times after watching this video, and that way you'll learn it for the rest of your lives. And once you learn this, you can't unlearn it. So it's a really, really cool thing. Um, I want to thank you all very much again for liking and subscribing and sharing with your friends and family. I want to thank you for that 100 subscriber mark that we got to. It's a big deal, and I'm very, very grateful. Thank you so much for listening and thanks for watching today. Uh, until next time, have a wonderful rest of week. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Hey, everyone. Thanks again for watching today's video. If you like the video, please share with your friends and family and please remember to hit that like and subscribe button as it really helps the channel. Until next time, please remember to practice and have fun.